afternoon, South Africa. I'm Bonnie Bully. Welcome to Afternoon Express. We're midway through the week and we are setting it off with a whole lot of laughter today. We're joined by two of South Africa's best loved comedians. First off, Chester Missing, who's brought along his assistant, Conrad Koch, and his wife, Gia Human. We also chat to rising star comedian, Skalk Bezadenhood. But let's see what Danilo's cooking in the kitchen. Indeed, so that's because of all this fun that's going on in the show today, we thought we'd kick it off immediately with some cooking going on in the kitchen. And you might not believe me, by the way, but we're making pho. Pronounced right? <laughs> Just let me get over my giggling here. <laughs> pho indeed, yes. What is Spelt pho? Spelled P-H-O, said pho. It's kind of like an F-E-R, F-U-R sort okay. of way. So what, what exactly is that? So it's a Vietnamese noodle bowl. It's very traditional. It's, it's eaten all over Vietnam. Mm. Uh, when I traveled to Vietnam, absolutely loved it. It's just a very simple but intricate in flavor dish. Lovely. Well, I would get straight into it because I yes, want to hear some of the comedy that's going on today. So I don't want to be distracted while this is going on. So how do we get started? <laughs> okay, so we've just got a pot heating up here. What we're going to do is get our stock going. So this is the base of a good fur. Yes. What we're doing is sort of a cheat fur, an easy one, just sort of like a midweek, quick, we don't have time to develop a stock yes. and really make yep. it from scratch because that's what you would do if you were making a traditional one. So we've just got a whole lot of stock here, just beef stock that we've... Um, okay. Yeah? No, I was going to say, like, so we like always have this conversation about beef versus something. chicken versus vegetable stock and the sort of flavors, etc. But beef is obviously so the we're making yeah. So we're going to do a beef fur. good fillet steak. You want to thinly slice it, have beautiful pieces of steak. So we're going to complement that with a cool. beef stock. All right. So in goes a little bit of sesame oil into our pan here, into our pot, nice and hot. For fragrance, lovely. Yes, indeed. Some garlic, actually a lot of garlic, let's mm. not say some. And a lot of ginger as well. Get that in there. And then some sweet basil, some Thai basil, because it's very difficult to find... Um, fresh Thai basil yes. here, so this one does the job. What's wrong with using normal basil? Uh, you absolutely can. You would pop that in the end when it's if it's fresh. The the Thai basil just has a slightly different, more fragrant does taste it? and smell to it. Yeah. Oh, it does. It almost smells like a green tea kind of fragrance. Yeah. Well, I mean, the dried the dried version is definitely going to have a sort of um, different smell to the mm. the fresh one. So this is a nice hot pan. We just. Caramelizing the onions and the garlic just a little bit. Well, not onions. The garlic the and ginger the ginger. And the garlic. And then in goes our stock, just all the way in. And we're really just heating this up here. We're okay. going to do a lot because the whole point of this noodle bowl is that it is a soupy noodle bowl. Yeah, so it needs to be kind of liquidy. It needs yes, to be liquidy a, as lot, a lot of liquid. So you're actually going to have the noodles and all the bits and bobs submerged in the liquid. Right. So that's going to just come Similar up to long. temperature. And then while I do the beef, you are going to get on the noodles. So we've just got some medium rice noodles from Woolworths. They just need to be soaked. You oh, don't have to simple cook as that. them. You don't have to cook them, boil them. So we've got boiling water there. Take a couple, three or four of those little discs out. Very convenient and helpful. For, like I said, for a midweek easy yeah. fur dish. This is, it's tasty and it's, it's kind of, it feels nutritious when you're eating yes. this dish. There's a no lot of freshness in it. And noodles are so awesome to have, especially if it's something like the rice noodles, because I really, really like them. They've got a nice uh, sort of texture to them. They're almost crunchy, but not at the same mm. time. And, and they really allow everything else to have the flavor, as opposed to feeling starchy or Time. Yeah, and on that note of texture, be careful when you're soaking them. Don't over soak them because they actually just almost disintegrate. Oh, so say when? So no, just cover it until oh. it's completely covered so that it soaks up nicely. And then it'll take roughly about five minutes. You want it to sort of just come apart, break up evenly, and then you're ready to go. And then just that's like going that, to go into that the stock. Yeah, I cover it all the way. Okay, we so we've go. got a pan going here, nice and hot. And again, some sesame oil just over our fillet steak here. The reason we've got the fillet steak is because you're going to sear it and it's going to stay quite raw yes. you can obviously cook it if you want to more um but the fillet steak is nice and tender not lots mm. of fat not lots of tendons and whatnot so when you're cutting it it will be easy to cut and you're not going to have to chew and chew and yes. chew and, and chew pull and chew. little bits because nice you especially want to eat this thing with a, a set of chopsticks it must be incredibly difficult to, yeah. to chew on a piece of sinewy meat okay. so with my so clean hands i'm with? just rubbing in this is a five spice we're just going to pop that on there so you've got five spice and then you put a bit of olive oil a little bit of sesame oil oh, sesame and then oil. some of the sriracha seasoning now, yeah. This is going to add a little bit of heat and a little bit of flavor to this. Just really rub it in there. You want to just coat this. You're, you're effectively creating a dry rub on this. Lovely. All over here, a little mm. bit of salt. Lots of nice chunky delicious. salt. And I and hope then, you're just going to kind of sear it. You're not going to cook it on for too long. You exactly, want, you that's want exactly that what I'm going to do. Just sear the outside. And like I said, you can absolutely cook it more if you want to. And the whole thing, just like this, into a nice hot pan. Hear that sizzle. Oof. And we're just going to slowly... Probably about a minute or two on each side. Turn it. You don't want to turn, 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 turn. You just, never, ever, just ever wait. turn red meat so often. Relax. 
Lovely. Turn it, turn it, turn it. We're going to carry on searing that and wait for that to boil. Fantastic. So you can get that going. We will relax right to an Afternoon Express. But before we get there, don't forget our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, is such a valuable resource for you. If you ever want to find these recipes and shopping lists, they are there for you, especially this recipe. It is one of those beautiful ones. We haven't actually made many noodle dishes before, so no. it's one of our main ones. So when you go find this uh, on Afternoon Express, you can go and find it there. After the break, we're on the couch with hilarious Conrad Koch and his fiance Gear Human to chat about their new show. We'll be right back after this. Surrender to indulgence. Which will you give in to first? Creation from the Lindt Master Chocolatier. Lovely to have you back with us here on Afternoon Express on SABC3. Now, he's been in our loft once before and has been quite a busy puppet since. And at the yep. moment, he stars alongside his assistant, Conrad Koch, in mass hysteria at the Artscape in Cape Town. And his new show, Missing, starts at the Johannesburg Theatre on the 20th of October. Joining us back in the loft, along with Conrad's beautiful fiancée, Gia Human, who performs the opening act for the new show, It's Chester Missing. Hello! Hello! Hey, hey. Chester, have you been bleaching your skin? No, no, I've, I've, gone, I've gone the whole way. I've gone full Michael Jackson. I'm Michael Jackson on steroids. You like my hair? No? Yeah, it's quite a... It's, quite a, it's, it's like I've got a Yorkshire Terrier on my hair. It's quite a hard look. Who, who cut your hair? You should Steve ask for your money back. Steve Hoff. <laughs> what? Go to hell, man. At least not, not dressed like a barcode. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get it? Oh, my God! <laughs> Wow, do you need help My with that? I just went on Steve Hoffner white to Nathaniel white. Oh, <laughs> can't just wow. change race. Yes, I can. It's <laughs> Okay, on so it's really lovely to have you back in the loft. But Thank you've you. been missing. You went missing twice this year. What is that what on happened? your ring? What is that you were? Oh, it's there? just never Julius you mind. Never you mind. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about when you went missing. Or two you flights. Apparently. Yeah, no, what, what happened? We were in, in Montreal. Okay. In um, uh, in Canada, and we came back. We you know got, done the Just for Laughs comedy festival, and it was crazy. They all we we parlez vous français, and then they came back on on Air France, and they lost my bag. I was missing. Do you know it's like being missing when your name is missing? It's like if he worked in a sex shop. Okay. Wow. Mr. Koch. <laughs> Gear. Did Do you, you get, get it? on Koch. with Chester? Koch. Uh, at the best of times, but we Koch. stay out of each other's way. Brother. And what's your opinion of him? My opinion of him, because I never really thought about that. Yo. I think it's best I don't have an opinion of him. Oh, He's quite outspoken. Okay. Well, I think <laughs> I might get a straight answer from you. Like, how did, why the makeover? He can't suddenly just show up looking so different and then we're supposed to be like, okay with it. Like, somebody it's a question something. I've asked as well. So, I mean, Conrad had to do it for various I mean, reasons. Look at those bright politically. Blue eyes. But um, we're just proving a point that it doesn't really make a difference. Wow. Yes, what? Oh. Uh, yes, it does. No, yes, it does. I'm trying to get a table booking in Cape Town. <laughs> <laughs> How did the three of you all meet? <laughs> a place in the Springbok opening lineup. Did you say lineup. the three of us? Yes. The what three the hell? of that us. That is so well, disgusting. <laughs> funny story that because Conrad and I it actually happens. met at. Yeah. Um, he was doing Vodacom Funny Festival. Okay. I was actually at the back so watching mm -hmm. Mark Lottering's show. And yeah. we all went out uh, potting afterwards yeah. at some club. Uh -huh. And uh, mm -hmm. Mark actually ditched me, so I didn't have a lift home. So I asked this lovely young gentleman here, who'd be chatting my ear off the whole night, oh, to me, take me home. Me. He had me and there. he He's took me home. Way. He didn't come up for coffee, though. Good. But Good. he yeah. did nice something move. else. He introduced me to Chester at 5 o'clock in the morning in Seapoint Main Road. Oh, my gosh. Dude, you're so That weird. was my cue to get upstairs very quickly, though. Wow, what was Chester <laughs> doing there? Exactly. Was, I, was in the what do you mean, what was I doing? Uh, yeah. You see how he treats me. Where must I keep you? <laughs> no, you do it. Yeah, you never said act. anything. Okay. You, see? you do it. Yeah, I see. <laughs> no, totally, clearly. You do a cabaret act as the opening to um, Chester's show. Yes. What I is do. your. And you have a character called Gigi. Gigi La Chanteuse Please tell us is about her. Gigi La Chanteuse is a cabaret uh, character from the 19th century. Okay. Um, unfortunately, her, her mannequin sidekick prop. Um, brought them to her demise or their demise by because he has a, a gambling problem and he made a deal with a sorceress. Okay. And so she was led into this sort of immortal curse um, mm -hmm. and she accidentally killed Louis because because it is a bloodlust immortal curse. Yeah. And um, however, she had his skeleton preserved and she keeps him alive and to this day she still takes him on stage with her as her assistant. Wow, what an interesting story. Yeah, so basically it's a song and mime kind of cabaret act. That's incredible. I heard it's amazing. Thanks. Now, 
Tell us what to expect from your show, Missing. You've got a show coming up, Missing. Do we do? Yes, yes. what can Monday. the audience expect? Do we need jokes? No, we have jokes. We've got Gigi's opening and then one... You've got your whole thing. <laughs> I didn't agree to... I don't get paid enough to do your stupid jokes. No, we've got a whole show. The politics, you know, what's been going on. ANC, NGC, this just happened now. What's and been you going have a on portfolio as well. Tell us about your I do. portfolio. Oh, so mass hysteria. This week's mass hysteria. I'm the Shadow Minister of Tuppets. Yes, surprise, surprise. Shadow so Minister I could of also get a role here in Artman Express. You could be there too, Bonnie. Okay, no With your thanks. Zedra outfit you have oh, there. Oh, no, thanks. Very thanks. nice, yes. But, okay, so have you got your jokes differentiated properly? You know which jokes you're telling at mass hysteria and which ones you're telling at missing? No, I, d I don't. I just tell whatever's in my head. Sometimes I use Skulk the Zaydenhoz jokes because they actually are funny. Ah, they are actually funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he looks but like a traffic cop from the 80s. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to tell me where you got that hair. You've My got to hair. come no, on. I, just no, I literally tell me that's, something. That's Steve Hotmail's pubic hair. I shaved it and I turned it into a wig. What? Can't say this. I can. So He'll sue you again. I don't care. Do you guys use each other as sounding boards? Do you do you let each other critique your work? And is it is it yeah, a tough definitely, process? Definitely. Oh, How sensitive do you get? Um, no, I think you we're suck, both past Conrad, You suck, Conrad, you suck. Yeah, okay. I mean, he runs his jokes past me, and I think, the, what's the usual answer these days? Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that his surname is Koch and sir, her surname is Human? Uh, wow. And so we're going to get he... married. How are you going to double barrel that? Human yeah. Koch. Okay, all right. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, what, what, what happens okay. when he's just in your face and you just want quality time with your man? Like... What do you what do you do? I oh, know him. He yes, gets he gets yes. left in his suitcase, locked up in a cupboard. Yeah, exactly. I'll make sure of that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what that's like. You well, work I'm at the really... SABC. Okay. Well, I really love your new look. I mean, I don't know what brought it on. Thank you. Thank no, and a you're lot not of No, I had enough of this guy riding on my career. I've had enough. <laughs> I've had enough. So now I'm also white. I can feel my inner desire for boltong and colonizing people. Okay. Right. Has life gotten easier for you in Cape Town? <laughs> What? No, this is yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I can't get a tender, though. <laughs> you can't just suddenly change race. What? Yes, I can. Have you seen but Leon Schuster? that's what I'm wanting. Have you seen Leon Schuster? Have you seen Leon Schuster? That guy <laughs> spent so much time that attending to the black Helen Zilla could use him as a life coach. Okay, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you get it, Bonnie? Um, yeah. Good. Yeah, good. I do. Good. <laughs> no, come see the show. But you you're, not the going, story. you're not going anywhere. We're going to play a fun game because I know you're lots of fun and you're really good at games. Which We're heading it? back to the Woo. kitchen. Bonnie, I think I just saved you from some of the most awkward moments on Afternoon Express right here. Comrade Koch, it's so cool to have you in the loft with us today as well as Chester Missing and your wife, Gia. It's really, really cool to see young, like, freaking talented comedians in the loft. We're not having awesome. any jokes in here because this dish looks amazing, All by the way. All sorts of laughing happening yeah. in here, man. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Chester tries to make his way over here. We'll just no, kick him out. No, it's the kitchen. Just throw a piece of meat at him. It's like, <laughs> okay, let's finish this dish off. So we've kind of soaked the noodles. They're ready to rock and roll. You've yes. seared uh, our filet. Yes. Um, you've prepared all the other ingredients here and yes, your stock indeed. is now settled. Nice and warm, ready to go. So really, this is just the assembling part. So like I said, this isn't easy for, really easy. It's a bit of chopping, a bit of picking of the, the leaves and whatnot, but otherwise, it's just assembling. Okay. Not, not a lot of effort. Simple. So what I'm going <laughs> to ask you to do yeah. <laughs> is just slice up the meat. As I said sure. earlier, if you would like to cook it more, you can, but this is going to be a rare cut. So, Ooh, so you have really, like, basically seared this mm. filet. This is pretty, pretty medium, rare underdone. No, rare. Not underdone, it's rare. rare. It's perfect. But I think that's the, exactly the way I like mine. The mind, trick so. to fur as well is that the thin, if you get it nice and thinly sliced, and your stock's hot enough, the stock actually continues to cook it. So you end up, if you start with a rare, you're gonna end up with a medium. Think about it like that. Mm. So take into mind, take into account that that is gonna happen when is you're that cooking it. that kind of thinly sliced? I know I'm yeah. not cutting very good no, go circles, but... No, that looks good. Okay. I'm gonna just step past you and just grab a bowl over here. And what we do is, like I said, start assembling. So I'm just gonna sort of show one bowl as an, as an idea. Example, cool. So in goes the noodles. Let's just use some of these. Oh, the steak just, uh, this filet just cuts so easily. Yeah. No. By the way, I love tender That's steak. That's it, you need something mm. nice and soft. You don't wanna be like hacking through, you know, something with all sorts mm. of tendons and sinews mm. and all that. So we're just gonna start dividing it amongst the bowls. However many people you have, I would set all the bowls up and you just kind of divide, go for it. You can almost make it a, like family style. Like put it, all of this on the table. Like a little you call it a... Little um, conveyor belt. Conveyor belt, there so you go. So you could put this on a table and everyone kind of helps themselves and makes their own sort of bowl of noodles as, cool. they, as you will. Go along. So fresh ingredients, this is a fresh dish. So, so nice um, green beans that we've just picked here, in season at the moment and delicious. 
Um, mm. Then we're gonna, I'm just gonna use some chopsticks over here just to make my life easier. Spring onions are very important when it comes to this dish. It adds a fantastic flavor. The, you're not gonna sort of get that pungent oniony taste because yes. the spring but onions are no, slightly I mean, milder. spring onions are the typical sort of Asian, Asian yeah. vegetable. Love them so much. So well, some... Is it, is onion a herb or a vegetable? Vegetable. Vegetable. Okay. Um, well, it's a stem. So then some ginger. We're making a fur and I want to have a stem and all these technical terms you might as well ask. <laughs> okay, then some of the basil here. So we're using normal basil. Like I said earlier, we can't, it's difficult to find Thai basil, mm -hmm. but normal basil will do. Some greens. It looks kind of strange, almost like a salad at the moment. But it does. like I said, when you pour your um, stock over it, all kind of comes together, Reduces. cooks a little mm. bit, and is delicious. All the veggies what will else? start to wilt, all the leaves will start to wilt, and all of your exactly. stuff becomes a little softer and goes in there. Okay, these little bird's eye chilies are pretty crazy and strong, yeah. so we're just going to add a few of those in there. How's that going? So far, so good. I'm doing okay. okay so you can pick and choose your literally ones. Literally, the meat goes in here. It's <laughs> And by the way, South Africa, if you are keen to make some of these recipes, you like getting confused about the names of things or the spellings or where to find them, it's all available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Shopping lists are there, the recipes there for you, and all the recipes we cook on the show are available over there. So don't be intimidated by what we're saying here and how to get it done this side. Go check them out. They're easy to follow, and they really, really are delicious. So well, I mean, quite frankly, them. it doesn't actually matter what it's called or how, to, yes. how you pronounce it. Well, it I'm maybe good. I'm trying to write it down. I'm like, I want to go get no, the, totally. the fur. How do you spell fur? It, you tastes, know? it tastes delicious, and I I promise you, you're going to love it. So okay. we've kind of put together, this is my bowl. You can later, you own. can make yours up there. And we're going to add the stock, the stock. So the stock goes right over the beef here. And it's going to start instantly cooking it. It is nice and oh, hot. I see. There we go. You can see it starts to slowly go a little mm. bit gray. And fill the bowl. This bowl's a little bit small, so it's going to make my life a bit fun. Um, Enjoy but, eating out of that one. And then that goes down Yesterday like that. I shoved a whole um, sort of, what you call it, a sloppy joe in my mouth. So <laughs> no, I'm not. The rest I'm of Africa can't wait now. for you to go and have a bite out of that one. No, extra Delicious. sriracha over there, a little bit of seasoning, and that's kind of it. And then we just make Simple. it up as we go. Mm. Mix it Divine. all together and enjoy it. It looks delicious, Claire. So I'm looking forward to making my one on this side later on. A little bit of seasoning, and then we're done. You guys can make this for yourself right here on Afternoon Express by visiting our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Now, after the break, I'll be on the couch with Joburg born award winning comedian Skelt, Skelk, Bazaar, no, Skelt Man. We'll be right back after this. Get 15% off with W Rewards when you pay with your Woolies card. Get the card, get the rewards. Welcome back to the funniness right here on Afternoon Express. Now, born in Johannesburg, he was raised in a typical biltong-eating, rugby-watching, soki-dancing Afrikaans family, but he never quite fitted the mold. After school, he moved to Cape Town to study drama, and when he couldn't find a job, he became... A hipster. Now, much to the disappointment of his traditional family, he spends his time in, in and around the coastal city on a one-geared fold-up bicycle wearing a jersey he found under a bridge, looking like the love child of a car salesman from the 70s and a French poodle. Joining us on the, in the loft is two-time Comics Choice Award-winning comedian Skulk Bezadenhout. You see, I can Hello. tell jokes too. Yeah, I wrote that. Oh, really? <laughs> Damn. Um, and also it was was a biltong dancing, soki eating community. Dodge, yeah. super dodge, yeah, that's cannibalistic. Yeah. And we don't tolerate that in yeah. the loft anyway. <laughs> so Skulk, man, your career's doing so well. I mean, as a young comedian, you've really, really exploded. So many exciting projects that are uh, in the pipeline at the moment. Yeah. Uh, first, let's begin with this growing up of yours, the Afrikaans family. Mm. You were the weird hipster kid in the family, and then how does that whole process work? How was your growing up? Yeah, I, it, was, it was not really, my, my family is quite liberal, it's more the, the, the people in, in my school that was the, the problem. I was always the, a bit more, bit more liberal. Were you bullied? Yeah, I was. Um, mostly by my dad, he was the vice principal, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think people were just a bit freaked out, I mean, because I, I was very liberal. So I took the, my, the, my matric uh, farewell date was the cleaning lady. Oh, And hectic. everyone just thought that was weird. I thought she was beautiful. But where does this come from? Where does, where does this all come from? Like, where did this spark in you to say, like, I, I think, choose I not think, to fit in? I think from my parents, my mom was the head of national intelligence in Joburg and my dad's a history teacher. So they always raised me very, very... Uh, yeah, just Constantly. that everyone's that everyone's equal, you know. Mm. And I think it's I think it, it has a, it has a lot to do to do. This isn't very funny, by the way, but it has a lot to do with your upbringing. Yeah, um, I'm sure. 
uh, how racist you are or not. Mm. So I've had a question from our technical crew who are very worried that your hair is also going to fall off on set um, at some point. Just want to no. make sure. That's attached to you. Yes, okay. yes. I had a haircut yesterday. Which, oh, that's which, a cut hair. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is... I, I mean, we have the same one. Yeah, yeah. we just, go to the same address, like, yeah. clearly. Something like that. So, Skulk, let's get back to your career because I could have fun with you all day long. Not, I mean, uh, with the jokes that's, and things. Wow. That would be um, different. Um, but seriously, though, your career is I'm, really... I'm, <laughs> I'm under 25. This is... The, I'm sure there's a law. <laughs> your Skulk, uh, your career is really exploding at the moment. You've got some really exciting things coming in the pipeline. First of all, TV show and then stuff you're doing with Peter Doug Ace and stuff. Tell us yeah. about the future of, of your career. There's a, there's a TV show that I'm hosting called The Click, which is a, sort of a, a dating show. I've never done this we're presenting before so that's 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 exciting and i'm doing a um, yeah, musical that peter der is directing called die van artist van groter which is one mm. of his old plays that, that he's just t turning into a musical and then uh, uh, quite a lot of stand-up yeah i'm doing a, a show called stand up and coming white christmas with um three other white guys well two other white guys and donovan goliath who oh, sort of love him. passes yes um, <laughs> okay. and then we do we're doing that and um he counts as the christmas side of yeah and i'm i'm opening for for mr chester missing and conrad and oh, mark lotching all the guys from mass hysteria for mm. for two out of the six nights uh, tomorrow okay. night and and next week thursday well, we're going to find out more about that later on but i mean one of the biggest things that i think has happened recently in the sort of comedy world and i'm sure you guys must be so tired of hearing his name trevor noah you had the chance to travel with never him. i never get tired of hearing amazing his name. well then there you go so we have some positive stories so my you... alarm in the morning it's trevor noah trevor noah trevor noah oh really wake up to something that. like that <sighs> Work so, harder. <laughs> so at the Cape Town show, you got the huge honor of opening up for him. Um, yeah. What does he like to travel with, and what did that teach you about your specific set? Um, well, what I really appreciate about uh, well, opening for him is he like really takes time with younger comedians. So yeah. every night he, he would watch my set. Um, even like at the end of a five-week run, he'd still be giving me notes mm. afterwards, saying tweak this, try this, try this. So like he really cares about young guys. And let's be honest, he, he doesn't need an opening act. He can yeah. just come out and the crowd's warm. Yes. But yet he still chooses to have an opening act so that he can give a younger comic mm. that, that, that platform. Sure. And as one of those guys who's really grown up uh, in, in this industry with some of the greats that you've worked with along the way, you've also built a name for yourself and you have been very different in the process. What is your style of stand-up comedy? Because, you know, everyone's trying to stand out. Everyone's trying to do something different. You know, some people try puppets. Some people try, you know, uh, <laughs> telling one-liner jokes. Some people like to be just really crude. What is your style? Uh, I don't... I don't know if I have a start. Sounds, uh, hipster, sounds hipster to me. I don't have yeah. a style. <laughs> I, I obviously take the Afri Afrikaans angle yes. um, often and, and at the same time sort of um, stand back and I'm very critical of, of Afrikaans people as well. I, I don't know if that's a style, but uh, that's, that's maybe an that's angle that, a lot of that people don't, don't hear from. often. Mm. And and my jerseys. That that is ninety percent of my laughs. Okay. It consists of my jerseys. These are actually um, made from the previous made ones. Made from my jerseys mm. that once I was on Espresso and I forgot it there, and now I'm here, and it's made into a lovely pillow. <laughs> pillow case. We we recycle on the show. Every Tuesday we run this competition. Yeah. Our Go Green segment. So this is one of the things we've done. Yes. We take failed comedians and we turn their jerseys into pillows, and then that usually. Well, I don't think I've been doing it long enough to have failed yet. Oh yeah, <laughs> true. So dude, we're very excited. <laughs> about your performance in Mass Hysteria. Everyone's been cool, very excited yeah. about it. Do you have a specific portfolio? What's your por portfolio? Like, portfolio? like, you know, you have, like, the minister of this and the... Oh, no, yes. no, oh. the minister of opening. I don't know. I only got <laughs> confirmed yesterday. I haven't given it that much thought. <laughs> okay, fantastic. We're really excited to see the show, and we'll be giving away cool. tickets uh, on Afternoon Express today. So we're cool. really excited about the rest of your career. If you guys want to win yourself some tickets and you're in Cape Town, then now is your lucky chance to win. We are giving away another five sets of double tickets to Mass Hysteria at the Artscape today on the show only. So all you have to do is SMS the keyword EXPRESS your name and city to double three seven two eight. SMSs cost one rand fifty. T's and C's apply and are available on our website afternoonexpress.co.za. And also, don't forget, we've got both of our comedians and everybody joining us on the couch for a game later on. But for now, it's tea time in the garden with Bonnie. Welcome to our Fresh Pack Natural Goodness series. Making a commitment to healthy eating is a great start towards a healthier life. The term organic is applied to so many areas of our lives, food, cleaning products, even the clothes we wear. But what does it really mean? And is it something that we can easily adopt for a healthier lifestyle? We have in the loft today, Dr. Shimondran, to help answer some of our questions. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you for having me. Lovely to have you. 
pour you some tea. What does organic actually mean? Organic makes reference to how agricultural products are actually produced. And uh, basically farmers have to abide by very strict rules in order to be certified as organic. Mm -hmm. Organic products cannot have any chemical fertilizers, hormones, antibiotics, basically all the things that are speeding up the agricultural process but aren't actually good for us. Right. And why is this so important for baby? It's extremely important for babies because what we're seeing today is with all the added chemical pesticides and hormones and antibiotics that are used in products, babies are showing more allergies, their, their immune systems are just getting shut by all of these stimuli that are added to the food products. By going organic, you're negating all of that. Now, Doctor, many foods, organic foods, that is, claim to be additive-free. But how can moms ensure that they are giving their children a healthy diet? Buying prepackaged food is convenient, I'll be honest with right. you. But it's not healthy. It's not good over the long run. Mm. So what you can do is just substitute the prepackaged food for whole foods. Another right. important thing would be substituting beverages that have sugar, caffeine, all those kind of additives in it for something that is naturally sweetened, like rooibos, which has no caffeine, has your antioxidants and added minerals, and it's suitable for the whole family. All right. Thank you so much, Doctor. Very insightful, as usual. <laughs> Thank you. So there you have it. To stay healthy, stick with the natural foods and drinks with no added chemicals. And if you want to keep your baby strictly organic, then look out for the organic fresh pack rooibos baby variant for a super healthy drink for baby. Until next week, though, keep well with the natural goodness of fresh pack. Fresh pack. Goodness comes naturally. Great to have you back with us. With two comedians in our loft, we figured that we can't miss out on the opportunity to play a game with them. We're back on the couch with Chester Missing and Skulk Bezaden Hurt, and here's how the game works. Uh, yeah, so basically the rules of this game is kind of like 30 seconds, but without 30 seconds at all. So it's basically, guys, we've got a minute each. What we're going to do is you've got a whole bunch of names of actors that you're going to have to lift up. We haven't seen them. You guys haven't seen them. You're going to go up there and try and get as many of these names out right as possible without actually... Yeah. You have to Im impersonate them. All right. No, yeah. Yeah. Must in the 30 seconds, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. spoke of that. I can't move. I don't move. I'll let this sit. Well, you'll okay, have to Scott, sit there then. Yes. And okay, just you'll just sit, watch and, and learn first, because Scott is first. Yes, Scott, you can start up there. Yourself. Yourself. Anyway. Your one minute starts in three, two, one, go. <laughs> we'll just start. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the, the, it's to us, eh? To us. It's to us. Oh, to if you guys. If it's too hard, move on, but try. You've got to try all of them. Okay, okay. Number eight is... is You get one, you get one, you get one. free. Yes. Um, That's one. Number ten. He's in mass hysteria. He's he looks like mine, but it has a grey. Uh, Mark oh, Lottering. Mark Lottering. Yes, I should have impersonated him. Damn yes. It. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 Beyonce. Yes. Um, <laughs> You're the very good at it. The money mm -hmm. of me. Only you would know. Um, Steve. Come on, uh, Steve. Oh, thank thank you. you. not Thank answering you. These Global, things, man. Global. Stop saying Steve's name. I'm missing. Um, in your face, guys. Oh, Look this, at your hair. This dress made out of meat is so delicious. Uh, huh? What? Lady oh, Gaga. Lady Gaga. Yes. Um, I, I want to become president. 20 seconds. Kanye um, West. Kanye West. I'm really rich. I'm okay. white. Donald, 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 Donald Trump. Trump. Yeah. You're not um, supposed to be where guessing. Where are you people from? Oh, I'm so sexy. Oh, I've got big lips. Sorry. I'm married Sorry. to Brad Pitt. Huh? Uh, Angelina oh, Jolie. Yes. Seriously. Five, um, seriously. Four. four. I've three, got one name, I've got no last two, name. I'm sexy one, and I'm all, all this. Time, time, time. time. Madonna, okay. Madonna that I said. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, okay. We'll, so give you your, we'll give you your name. score in a bit. You oh, got seven. In. You actually got seven. You. Thank you. Because yeah. Chester's well lazy. All right. Well done. You got seven. You have to be comment. You have to help him. My body doesn't work. I'm like a full body Oscar. Okay. Don't laugh at that. Gosh. Is that rude? What's going on, Bonnie? Yeah. I just can't believe Your time starts the in three, two, one, go. This is it. safe because we can okay, keep him quiet. Go for it. Okay, uh, he just got to host a TV show in the United States. Oh, Trevor Noah. Uh, he's our best cartoonist. Just 
I mean, Conrad Koch. Co no, 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 uh, the Antwerp. Very good. Uh, he's also on that hysteria and he's Jewish and his name says no whites. Huh? Ian Blanca. He's a white guy. He's a Jewish, South Africa's no stainless Jewish can eat never mind. Who is oh, it? Nick Rabinovitz. Very good. Who's the resident of the United States? <laughs> Rabino Vitz. Who's the resident of America? Um, Barack Obama. <laughs> yes, Five, okay. Four, uh, three, two, and that's who not had a fight with one time up. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was quite good actually. I'm very that proud of you, good, Chester. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seems like we Your actually got a tie. We've got a tie. Your hair tie. is throwing me off. What do we do with the tie? Do you guys have to We should have like a joke off? No, I'm joking, joke that off. mustn't happen. No, that's You're a joke off. <laughs> 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 this is why I have such big Okay, cool. Thought. Let's I mean... have a joke off. We've got a okay. Should we Who's go again? Should we first? go again? Because somebody has to win. <laughs> oh, somebody please. has to win. We need win. a Mari biscuit and then we'll... Do one more and then you do one. Can, can you go first? Wrestle. You do one more. I'd rather yes, arm wrestle. Okay. Okay. okay, arm yeah. wrestle. Okay. Go. But he... Three, two, one, go. Oh, my God, you're so strong. Wow, guys. Skull so one. Strong. Wow. All right, now South Africa. The joke's on us. <laughs> really. We'll be back on the couch later on. You guys can engage with us. 083 913 Have some fun with us online on Facebook, Twitter, and our Instagram account. Now, many of us have dogs, and often we don't know what it's going, what's going on in their bodies at their age. We recently <laughs> caught up with veterinarian Danny Elkin uh, from VetPoint to chat about the various life changes of a dog uh, and to look at what checkups are needed for pets at various ages, from puppy to senior. Take a look. Throughout your pet's life, it will need stage-specific care for good health. For puppies, vaccinations protect them against harmful infections. This is, um, this is little Molly. She's a four-month-old um, street special. She was rescued by an organization called Tin Can Town. She's in for her final vaccination booster. We generally vaccinate our puppies at eight weeks, 12 weeks, and then again at 16 weeks. The core vaccinations are there to protect them against horrible viral diseases like distemper, um, parvovirus, hepatitis, and parainfluenza virus. Um, and then they obviously need to get two rabies vaccinations as well um, whilst they're puppies. Then what we often also do is we deworm them at the same time as these vaccinations just because puppies have a tendency to pick up a lot of rubbish while they're, while they're out and about. Your puppy also needs good nutrition for healthy growth and development, and it's an ideal time to implant a microchip. Microchipping or tagging is something that we also like to do in the puppy stages. So the microchip is a tiny little um, chip that gets injected between their shoulder blades. And basically, there's all uh, welfare organizations and all vets have a scanner which can detect this microchip. Um, each dog has a unique code, which is then linked to the owners. So if your dog goes missing and it gets brought into a veterinary practice or an animal welfare organization, they'll scan it, they'll see your code, they'll send it off to the, to the manufacturers of the microchipping company and it'll get linked to your name and they'll be able to contact you. The microchipping process is really, it's a painless procedure. The needle is a tiny bit bigger than the average needle that we use. They hardly ever feel it and it's the kind of thing that you don't need it until you do need it. Once your dog is a fully grown adult, the focus shifts to maintaining good health and looking after their teeth and gums. One of the easiest ways to implement good oral hygiene is um, to put your dog into a dry food. So the abrasive action of crunching through those pellets helps keep the teeth clean, um, kind of like eating an apple. So what we use is just a tiny little piece of gauze, and all you need to do is pop it on your finger, and then you just gently lift the gum, give that canine a bit of a scrub, two or three strokes, and then all the way back to the molars. The tongue cleans the inside of the teeth, so you don't have to worry about that. Ultimately, if you do this enough, you're gonna avoid having to put your dog under anesthetic. Unfortunately, to clean their teeth, we do have to put them under GA, because the dog obviously isn't gonna go, ah, and sit and wait for you to, to clean its teeth. Your middle-aged dog needs to be in good physical condition, which helps prevent diseases. One of the questions I get asked the most over the phone is how much should my dog weigh? And obviously that's very difficult for me to answer over the phone. The weight of your dog isn't that important. The condition of your dog is. You want to just be able to feel the ribs of your dog when you rub your hands over the thorax, and you want a nice little, a nice little waistline. As our dogs get a little bit older, obviously their metabolism slows down a little bit. So most of the diets for our middle-aged dogs are a little bit lower in calories than, than for the younger dogs. 
the foods these days, they're also starting to add a lot of chondroprotectants to the, to the foods. So we're starting to protect the joints before we see signs of arthritis rather than once we see signs of arthritis. The advantage of a pelleted food over a wet food, for example, is that every single kibble you know is, 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 is properly formulated for your dog. As your dog moves into its senior years, impaired mobility and joint pain often starts to plague your beloved pet, but there are good treatment options available. This is Oscar. He's a 12-year-old Amstaff, and he's recently been diagnosed with arthritis. Arthritis is something we see quite commonly in our older dogs. Basically, it's just degenerative changes within the joints. Weight is a very active tissue on top of putting extra force onto all of those sick joints. It also secretes um, a lot of uh, messengers that are pro-inflammatory, so they actually worsen the inflammatory process in the joints. So some of the signs that you might see in your dog is that he or she is not as keen to go on walks anymore. They're often a little bit slow in getting up after they've been lying down for a while. Uh, some of our clients also complain that the dog whimpers at night or it struggles to get into a comfortable position when going to sleep. These are just a few of the signs that you, that you might come across. Diets is the use of what we call chondroprotectants. So these basically protect uh, the, what cartilage is remaining in the joints. You can't really um, help the cartilage reform, that's a very slow process. So our goal is to try and protect the remaining cartilage. Um, and that obviously a nice smooth cartilage in the joint is a lot more comfortable for the, for the patient. Well, today we are giving away a Bob Martin hamper to the value of 500 Rand to one lucky viewer. All you have to do is SMS the keyword Bob Martin, your name and city to 33728. SMSs cost one Rand 50. Terms and conditions apply. Visit afternoonexpress.co.za to find them. Now, after the break, we have a very special treat for you. We know we've been having lots of humor in the loft today, and I'm sure you might be feeling quite blue. Well, the exact opposite of blue. We have blues musician joining us in the loft, Gerald Clark. Don't don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Show them how much you love them with Bob Martin. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're about to be treated South Africa. He's an accomplished South African musician, recognizes for his extraordinary ability to tell a story with honesty and soul through the power and emotion of the blues. <laughs> Joining us in the loft ahead of the release of his new album, uh, Afro Boor and the Golden Goose, is Gerald Clark, along with guest musician Anx Mona. Really cool to have you guys with us in the loft. Thank you. Gerald, obviously you, have a, you love telling stories with, the, with your music, and this new album was recorded in a really, really cool way. Uh, Tell us about the whole recording process. Well, How did you get yeah, it? Yeah, it was it's an old house in Wellington um, on a farm, and um, it was really hot. It was in January, <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully the album and reflects the, the temperature. Um, I got a bunch of very good musicians together. Um, I don't know why I'm speaking into this mic. I don't know actually. I was wondering. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I thought, <laughs> thought I wouldn't. So yeah, I've, I, I was I was playing with a bunch of very good musicians for quite a quite a while, and I decided mm -hmm. you know I've got a lot of, uh, enough material to do the album, so I put the whole plan in action, and I got it, and I I think I got what I wanted from them. Amazing. Yeah. Which is what. Well, it's a blues. Look, I come from a blues background because I feel first time I've heard somebody like John Lee Hooker. It's like authentic feel to his music and in mm. that time you know how music can get it gets all virtual you know realities and very electronic and, synthesized. and well not just that it's just produced for to please you know big audience and it, you know it's like donald's at the end of the day. <laughs> so i just felt blues got a, like a real you know straight to the heart feeling mm. and um i started writing songs according to what i felt blues tells me mm. And I've become a songwriter outside the blues genre so this album i think is a kind of a fusion with with song that's outside the blues, but with the authenticity of what oh, I know, I think blues is. I mean, look, I mean, it might not be the answer to the universe, you're an artist. but you uh, interpret it. It's fine. Yeah. That's how it works. Now, obviously, when I remember interviewing Good Luck and finding out about how they recorded also their album Out in the Wild is what they wanted to do, and um, they used a whole bunch of high tech equipment when they got that whole okay. process done. How did you go about recording? Well, it was done live, in mostly in a in a big living room. Yeah. With all the equipment, I mean, I didn't even use any distortion pedals on my on my guitar. Sure. 
So it's old, old, old amps. Um, the Hammond player played through a, a Leslie speaker. It's basically the, the same thing that uh, Jim Morrison's Hammond player used. It's like a big wooden box. Yes, there it is. Oh, there. yeah, there it is. That's the one. Wow. So it's got a very li live feel. It's got an old mm. feel. And, um, Soulful feel. Like a skulk from America, so all the good things, really. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So the, any, obviously this album that's just come out now, you are hopefully going to release a whole bunch more soon. What can we expect uh, from your sound? You mean the albums? Yeah. Well, I'm basically going, going on this whole like adventure next year, basically leaving my house and um, touring South Africa and might go up, th up to Africa. I've got some... Um, connections there in Zambia and so forth. So yeah, I'm thinking of writing an Afrikaans album. Nice. The next one. So I've I have actually I started my solo career with an Afrikaans mm -hmm. like a not that any of the Afrikaners really liked it. <laughs> but the critiques loved it. Well you kind of you so, infuse that sort of African element to the Afrikaans scene and like you named the album Afro Boot like and, and the Golden Goose. Those two names are very yeah, interesting. Yeah. This is Project Afro Boot, by the okay. way. Okay. So and if I've got an Afro, I'm going to cut my hair like skulls. I was about to ask you, I was about to say, I, I know you from your long hair. Which so I'm going to draw skulls, your, the attention from you back to me oh, and hey, skull. Because yeah. he said he's got the same hairdresser, but definitely not the same jeans. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> clearly not. Clearly not. So let's go back to those names. How did you come up with those sort of names? Do they have any relevance to, to The Afro Boo and the Golden Goose is just a reflection. I didn't want to go and find some clever name. I just wanted mm. to have a reflection of where I am at the moment. And um, the Afro Boo has come because I'm, an, you know, my name is Gerald James Clark. My ex is England Afrikaans. Mm. So this is body Afro Boo from Don. Come with Af I'm every six months. I'm sitting with an Afro on my head. <laughs> so I just thought that's that's a It'll cool name. It'll keep growing. Yeah. yeah. And the Golden Goose, who's that? That is somebody <laughs> I met at Opi Kopi. Oh. Yeah. And since then, my life has just been better. So I just called it the Golden Goose. Oh, lekker. Well, we're looking forward <laughs> to seeing your performance. You've got a song called Fire for us. So yes. the stage is yours. Take it this away. is my friend's friend Ong's Mana. He joined me on the on the recording. And this Ong's, is the... you're a legend, man. Enjoy it, guys. Let's do it. <laughs> Sitting in front of this fire makes me warm. Follow those five men to bring me home. Yeah. Wake up in the morning. Gotta make a living, Lord. Far away from home. I gotta get up, 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 get up. Just to survive. I gotta work hard. Just to stay alive. In the dark corners of my day, yeah. My mind wanders to the places that I used to play In my heart, there's a space for you yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome anytime, anytime I said I know that you'll be ready soon Ain't got to get up, 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 get up Just to survive I gotta work hard just to stay alive. I got to get up, 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 get up. Just to survive. Yeah, I gotta work hard. Just to stay alive. Ain't it a shame and a sin? One man gets it all. You know the other one has to has to burn and fall. Now, I don't want no pity, Lord, and I don't want nothing for free. Well, just some time in the sun for me. Just to survive, I gotta work hard. Just to stay alive. I got to get up, 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 get
get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, just to survive. I gotta work hard. Work it up and take to my mind. Just to stay alive. Oh, yeah. Come and join us at the table. I feel like you said the songs will get up, get up, so I'll get up and give you my seat. How about that? Yeah, you can have Done and dusted. Too. This just looks amazing, by the way, Claire. It's really, really no, cool. No, you must dig in. No, Chester, the soup might be a little bit cold, but we're good to go. <laughs> awesome. Chester, did you enjoy that performance? Yes, it was. Can it was you sing? Amazing. No, I can't sing. I oh. can't sing. This guy has no talent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to taste the, 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 the dish we made you today? I can't. I don't have the digestive system. This oh. whole puppet thing hasn't been explained to oh. you. Has you it? talk a lot of, you know, so... No, I don't understand. Well, how it was what? created. I don't what? What? Nothing. So with, your, oh, wow. Who is this guy? so with your whole new makeover, you didn't upgrade any other parts of your body. I thought you, you wanted. Know, oh, did I have the operation? Because I thought a, a white thing on a black guy, didn't they? Hey, that's reconciliation for you. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't even know what to say to this kid anymore. Oh it's like one of those gosh. like let's avoid him. Let's cover his eyes and his mouth. And How much doesn't... gel does your hair actually take? Not much actually. It's quite soft. Want to feel it? No, I can't. Oh, you, can, you can head bite it. Let me just. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh. Who's your daddy? What's in store for you for the rest of the year? That's the show. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm quite a flaze race and articles kind of guy. I'm sure Gerald's the same. So it's going to be interesting. Right. But I'm sure it looks delicious. It's and in terms delicious. of your work, what can we look forward to? At the oh, is that what the year? question yeah, kind of <laughs> was? Because <laughs> 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 okay. I was so it's nervous okay. for the <laughs> food. I was just like, okay, question, not food. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I am planning a one man show at the Baxter next year. Oh, amazing. I, I think I need a. Um, Sort of break out of the opening act. Yeah, sure. <laughs> thing. Thing. And then go out on your own. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. Awesome. And I actually have to ask you, Gerald, I forgot to ask you in your interview. What well, shows you got coming up? Can we come and see you perform yes, live? Yes, um, at the moment, there's the two launch shows I think is uh, quite prominent. I've got uh, average about three to four shows a week, but I think the ones that I want to speak about is the one on the 14th of November at the Blackloop and Wine Farm, which is oh. the launch of the whole. The whole band, and then I'm going up to Pretoria and doing all these little theatres and doing the Atterbury Theatre, which is quite a, like a big, nice. a big, big theatre. Sure. So that's the ones I think uh, you should get uh, out. see if you can come and join me. Absolutely, awesome. it's such <laughs> an experience. Wow. And Thank for us, you so you've got to look. You've got to look. Next week is uh, we got we had Nasisteria this week, yeah. aren't we, Skulk? And then yeah. night our show missing through missing. next week at Joburg Theatre through the twentieth. Thank you. I'll Thank be you. sure to get my tickets. Absolutely. But remember, <laughs> South Africa, we're giving away that Bob Martin hamper to the value of five hundred rand. All you have to do is SMS the keyword Bob Martin your name and city to double three seven two eight. SMSs <laughs> cost one rand fifty. Wise, terms and conditions apply. Go to OptimumExpress.co.za to find all of those terms and conditions. Really? Are you? Must I feed you some of this Bob <laughs> Martin stuff? You like an animal. Nice for Afternoon Express again tomorrow at four p.m. on three. And tune in early because in the first fifteen minutes we chat to Ari Fabian of Fabiani all about men's fashion. And in the kitchen we're making a carrot and pineapple cake. Mm. Yummy. Sounds absolutely mm. delicious. You South Africa, thank you so much for tuning in to Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. We love you so much. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Good night. Happy eating. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, menswear fashion entrepreneur Ari Fabian of Fabiani joins us in the loft to chat about the company and showcase some of their latest designs. Another feel-good production.